The thing that's come to mind for me that's a harsh reality is that each lake that we visit this season, it's gonna be my last tournament on that body of water. And it's tough. I mean, that part of me, I'm a competitor. That part of me, I burn to win. Lake Murray. This is a place that I've fished a lot of times and I've never won here. How special would it be to be able to make that happen? That's my main number one goal is to have a good season. You want to contend for Angler of the Year. I want to qualify for heavy hitters and Red Crest for next year, but I really want to win one on this last season. The sense of urgency is a lot greater. All season long, each tournament, I'm putting more and more pressure on myself to do that. You know, I mean, in practice, I'm there at the crack of light when we're allowed to be on the water and out till the end of the day, every day. I'm putting in the work. You know, I'm just doing everything that I can. I'm doing it in tackle prep. I'm doing it in preparation between tournaments, doing it in research, you know. I am putting in more work and more energy than I ever have because that sense of urgency is real. I know you're going to get a loud 25 time Bassmaster winner recently announced this will be his last year of competitive fishing from Kalamazoo, Michigan, KVD, Kevin Bay. The GOAT, the greatest of all time, a seven-time Bassmaster Angler of the Year, four-time Classic Champion, and multi-time Major League Fishing Cup Champion. Well, let's give it up for Kevin Van Dam! Cause I can run, but I can't the feelings that I know I can't keep by. So far, the season has, I mean, it has flown by. You know, it's my final pro season on tour. I'm just trying to relish all the moments and it's going so fast that I kind of want to hit rewind or I want to hit the, the slow button, the pause, just kind of enjoy it, you know? And it's weeks like this, you know, too, that are going to be really special. That's the things that when I'm not on tour anymore are going to be hard. You're not going to be around all your friends that you've known your whole life on tour all season long it's going to be so important for me to just take it all in you know to, to slow down you smell the roses <laughs> so to speak gosh it's just it's been emotional it's gone so fast so far already but i just you know i want to take it all in that right there never gets old that's some things that i look forward to and all these different lakes over the years so many different sunrises and sunsets that's the things you appreciate in your final season First morning of practice here at Lake Murray for stage three of the Bass Pro Tour. And what a morning it is. We gotta get it, you know, figured out. Again, the place has got a lot of history. Looking forward to it. Trees are starting to green up. It's fairly good warm conditions. A lot of fish should be spawning. There's also a blueback herring lake where it's got that to worry about if the, if the herring start to spawn. So you can see schooling fish. It's been taking really good weights here all spring long. This is a fantastic fishery, so look forward to getting back on the water here. You know, a big thing early on in practice is just trying to see exactly what stage the fish are in. You know, the water's 60.8 degrees here. You can see the trees are, are budding out and 
you know, it's prime time when you know there's going to be a lot of fish should be spawning. But the other big thing here is this lake is a blueback herring lake. And these fish really focus and get on that. And the herring spawn shortly thereafter, the bass do. So it happens in April every year. We might be a little bit early, but just based on the conditions that we've got, you know, you've got to, you got to keep it honest or keep an eye out for it. So, so I kind of picked this area of the lake here where it's real calm. You know, sometimes you can see them, they'll come up busting and chasing those herring like that just to see if it's happening. So whether they're pre-spawn, spawning, or the herring are spawning, I mean, these fish are definitely always focused on them and always looking for them. So just trying to get a good feel of what's going on. But my gut tells me that this is going to be a lot of shallow fishing, basically sight fishing, you know, fishing docks and things like that for bass center in some phase of the spawn themselves. And if you can get lucky enough to find an area where there's some bass chasing herring as well, that's just a bonus. So far this season has not really started off the way that I'd hoped for my final season. Got on track on the final hour of the first tournament in Florida at Kissimmee and just missed the cut. Had a tough red crest, you know, was on the right kind of fish and couldn't make it happen. Douglas and Cherokee, same thing. We had a good event there, ended up three ounces from the top 10 there, missed the top 10 cut, but you know, we're heading in the right direction. So I'm hoping that the history that I have here from the past and understanding you know, this lake during this time of the year, during the bass spawn and the herring spawn especially, will pay off for me. Not what you want here, but you know, the thing is he's up here super shallow chasing bait. So there are gonna be bass doing it someplace. There's a good one right there. About a two pounder right there. Another one on this one, on that block right there. Good one right there, a big one. They must be really locked on pretty good where they're not chasing bait around much. It's hard to see today, but there's five in that pocket right there. There's one right there. That's a good one too. Damn. You know, I just went into this kind of calm pocket and it's cloudy. You know, there's like five right in there and I marked two, two that are big ones, you know, on bed. So there's obviously a lot of them, like I expected, a lot of them spawning. You know, with these conditions, it's not easy to, to find that, but I know the section of the lake and just from the history that I've had here that, you know, we'll try to find some more. So we'll look around for that, but I'm gonna try to find some other patterns too. So when they're up spawning like this, one of my favorite baits is a caffeine shad. But here on this lake with all the blueback herring, man, you, you wanna have something that kind of imitates that too. So this Carolina chrome, I mean, is really made for this region of the country, but this is just a good thing to, to pitch around and fish in these some of these shallow areas and uh, on these points as well where they're at. The first day of practice for me was, was pretty darn slow. Again, fishing a lot of places that I know that the herring get, trying to keep that honest, and just didn't see a lot of schooling activity. And man, the stripers, just striper after striper. They seem to be a lot more prolific than before. The herring are there. I mean, I'm seeing the herring, the birds are up there, the stripers are up there, they're following my baits, and there's just not a lot of bass. But, you know, it's cloudy, it's windy, it's really hard to see. Normally, what I want to do when I, during that heron spawn is I'm just going to drive up there on these shallow clay points and just, you see the bass. They just sit in there waiting for those herring to come. They don't roam around and chase them. They sit there on those points and wait for the herring to come to them. Got it. That's a bass. Good one, too. Right on that corner with so much current there. Bet you there's a whole slew of them stacked there. Every time, every bridge is gonna be good. Covered a ton of water today from the upper end to the lower end. The best thing that I saw was a lot of spawning fish, a lot of, a lot of fish moving shallow. Caught a lot of stripers, seeing that the, the herring are up. Just haven't connected completely. Caught a few little ones offshore, so got one more day of practice to figure it out. You know, so after practice, you gotta do your tackle prep. And this is the time when I kinda go through my game plan and what you want based on the weather conditions and, and tie the baits on that you think you're gonna do well. And it may not seem like it, 
when you're watching from the outside, but these blueback herring lakes, they're tricky. And during the spawn, the herring spawn especially, God, these fish are, they get real smart and you have to throw the right color and the right speed and action. So I'm just rigging up a lot of different stuff, you know, from swim baits to caffeine shads to a jerk bait. I've caught a lot of fish on this is a elite series. This is one that basically I designed this color to be like a smelt, but it's very much like a herring. It's got kind of a blue glimmer side with that kind of greenish green pumpkin back. And that's what those herring really look like. And you just cast this out there and instead of jerking it, I basically just reel it and stop it reel it and stop it. They, I was hearing swim in a pretty straight line and just reeling a jerk bait is a good tool. Without a doubt, one of my number one baits is going to be a Strike King Red Eye Shad. So I'm mixing it up between the Silent and the Tungsten Two Tap. It seems like they like not a lot of sound. Those herring are real subtle the way they move through the water. And this silent red-eye shad, it's a killer down here. It's kind of a secret on any of these, these local lakes. The guys figured it out that, you know, when we came out with that silent red-eye shad, just how effective it was in these lakes. So I caught a lot of good fish on that. It's all about the conditions. You know, today with it being fairly calm, as long as you got a ripple or a breeze on there, you can get them to bite a moving bait. But if you don't, you know, I'm gonna rig a Carolina rig and a shaky head and a wacky worm because I know right where they're sitting. So it's just a, it's a matter of throwing a whole gamut of stuff through there and trying to get one to bite. And there'll be a bunch of them there. And most cases, you're gonna get a couple of bites. And then it's like, when you catch one, you pull the whole school off, they follow them out and it's over. You gotta, you gotta, maybe you can come back in an hour. And if you happen to hit one of those places right when the herring pull up there, it can be deadly. So this is another bait that I've caught some fish on. It's a, it's a Strike King King Shad. It's basically out of production now. So we have that and a Wake Shad. And just burning one of these across those points is really good too. I, I'm gonna have a lot of rods out and be running through a lot of different stuff just trying to get one bait that they react to. That's what you're hoping for. morning this morning you know it's the first day of the tournament for me I'm in in group B and you know Jonathan had a great day yesterday he's actually leading his group so you know that gives me a lot of confidence because he knows this herring type deal as well too so looking forward to having a great day we just launched the boat uh, you know I'm staying here right on the water so it makes it really really nice we're gonna ride down to to take off pick up our official and get the day going Lake Murray's really showing out. It's perfect time right now. We've got great conditions this morning. It's gonna be cloudy, kind of windy. I feel real confident after my practice that I'm, I'm gonna have a good day, you know? I mean, I found a lot of fish. I know, I understand this herring spawn, how it kind of works, but you just gotta be in the right rotation. These fish can be super, super fickle. They get a lot of pressure, so your timing is, is real important. So you gotta fish the conditions. So I've got a good setup for do that, a good game plan. Hopefully we have a great day. Coming into this event, he sits 25th in Belly Bet Angler of the Year points. Representing Strike King, Lose, Give It Up for a multi-time cup winner, Kevin Van Dam! So today was, you know, a solid start, but you know, I'm pretty disappointed based on my practice that I didn't catch any, you know, big ones, you know. When you get a chance to separate yourself, 
especially in the qualifying round like this, you need to do that. You know, I mean, the weights are really, really, really close. I just don't think that I can go again and not get a couple of big bites, you know, because so many times today I'd be reeling in a two and a half pounder or a three pounder and there'd be a five or six pounder trying to take the bait out of his mouth, you know, so he just got it to it first. And that's just part of the deal when you're fishing for fish that are grouped up like this. So, you know, I've got a great pattern. I know there's a lot of fish. You know, I only ran about half of my water today, you know, just trying to be efficient. Got to get back out there on the second day for qualifying and just make the knockout round. Then it's all about focusing on the spots that I have the most confidence in and where the big bites are at. So hopefully we can make that happen. So just all in all though, a good solid day. So another beautiful morning here at Lake Murray. I mean, today it's going to be hot, you know, upper 80s for temperatures. We're gonna have a little bit of wind though. The other day we didn't have that and that's a big plus. So, you know, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people out on the water today fishing. Everybody's kind of watching the live stream, seeing what's going on, but it's, it's my second day. You know, the lake is getting more and more pressured. Uh, I know where there's a lot of fish at and I got a ton of confidence. Right now I'm sitting in 11th, the goal today just make sure to have a solid day and get in the knockout round. If, you know, if I can get off to a good start and catch a good bag, then you know the rest of the day, I'd like to just spend my time looking for more, looking for more places where they're sitting. So, you know, the herring spawn is so different than any other kind of thing you have to deal with. And that's where, you know, that history in the past hopefully will pay off for me today. In the end, I know I'm gonna be around them. I feel like I'm gonna get the opportunities. I just gotta capitalize when I can. You gotta catch those big ones. If you get an opportunity at a six, seven, eight pounder, gosh, that's the one you have to have. It just goes so far each day if you can catch a fish, you know, over five pounds because there's gonna be a lot of big weights. He finished 11th at stage number two from Kalamazoo, Michigan, representing Bass Pro Shops, Nitro, and Strike King, known as one of the greatest of all time, Kevin Van Dam! make a difference right there. Four pounds, 13 ounces. Yeah. <laughs> so today was an absolute grind. You know, I went through the whole first period and really only had one roll on my swim bait and never had any other bites other than a, a non-scoreable. I mean, they just were totally gone from a lot of the points that they were on the other day chasing those herring. I never seen one blow up. I never seen any herring. So I really struggled trying to make that work. I, I seen a few finally, just, you know, a few bass up there, but it just w really wasn't happening. Changed up my game plan and you know started throwing a wacky worm and a shaky head and a baby z2 on an ed rig and just kind of sight fishing you know just using my eyes out there just looking for any dark spot light spot stump rock anything like that and cast into it and looking for fish on bed so you know i ended up catching a few off beds and the rest of them were just kind of you know blind casting around like that 
And finally in the afternoon, I saw a big one just outside of a bed with a small male and it was really focused on it and took a little while, but got that baby Z2. I threw a shaky head, I threw a wacky worm, threw all the drop shot, all that, and it, it just would not do it. But the way that baby Z2 stands up on that net head, it, it couldn't handle it and I caught it. I think it was a 4.15 and that's the one that put me in the cut and made the knockout round. I've been looking at the weather forecast all week, just waiting for these couple days. You know, that moon's full and I, I was really excited about it. But after today, you know, I, I know that I'm gonna have to change things up. But if we get good conditions, I'm confident those fish are, are gonna move back up. I mean, if the herring move up, the bass are gonna move up with them. And that's the way to catch a big sack right now. knockout round today so you know I'm definitely not gonna fish like I did yesterday you can see we, we got some clouds today winds already blowing a little bit I'm pretty excited for it you know this is a great opportunity to have a top finish here after practice I thought I'd have a good shot to potentially even win with what was going on we got a full moon a lot of the bass are spawning a lot of the herring and shad are spawning as well right now so it just creates a lot of different opportunities I'm sure when this thing's over it'll be really cool to see all the different techniques and patterns that the guys use to you know get to the top but i know what i'm going to do i'm going to go out there and fish my strengths and try to make the dang top 10 you know and today you want to catch everything you can so if we get a window to make some magic i'm gonna you know burn the place down so we'll see what we can put together he finished 17th of the group b anglers all the way from kalamazoo michigan bass pro shops nitro strike king and lose a multi-time angler of the year give it up for kbd kevin van Dam. Man, not the, the day I was hoping to have today. It was just real tough, you know, the weather conditions. We didn't get the wind that they forecasted. You know, I had the opportunities and, and kind of got on a little flurry when we got the wind going and then it just filtered out. And at the end, again, I kind of got on some, some of those uh, herring points that the fish were on and just didn't get the right bites. Caught a jillion stripers today and was one quality fish shy of, of making that cut. And that's, that's the way that it goes. You know, I had a couple of, Big ones bite and you, you know, you just, you're gonna lose some like that. So it just happens to be that. So it's pretty disappointing. I like this lake a lot, you know, it's, I've fished it many times. I really understand what's going on. I found a, you know, a handful of places. I feel like I'd have a pretty good chance to have a big day tomorrow again, but unfortunately that's not the case. So, you know, we just have to move on. Heavy hitters is next. That'll be a fun event, you know, no points or anything. It's all about trying to catch those big ones there in Louisiana at Caney and, and Bussy Break. So looking forward to get going back there as well. And uh, I wanna, you know, finish strong. And, uh, you know, I had a decent finish here. It's frustrating, you know, it hurts. There's no doubt. I mean, it's my last season, trying so hard to make it happen, trying to be patient during the day to allow things to materialize. And it's part of fishing. I've done this for 33 years and I still learn every single day.